Hello and welcome back to Charlie's House Call Auto Repair. Today we've got the 2005 Lexus ES330 back. We're going to be doing the front brakes on this vehicle. This is the same one that we've already replaced the steering rack in, the uh, rear brakes. Now well, we're going to be doing the front brakes. We've got 240,273 miles on the odometer. As you can see, we've got the vehicle jacked up. We've got a jack stand underneath it. We're only going to be doing this one side at the moment because it's getting extremely windy and we're supposed to have some downpours within the next hour or two. So we're going to see how much we can get done kind of quickly today. For ease and simplicity, we've got the jack, the jack stand, we've turned the wheel out this way because this is the only one we're going to be working on at the moment. So we already grabbed the sockets, 17 millimeter on the caliper bracket, 14 millimeter on the caliper itself. I'm going to go ahead and get these cracked loose. Careful your bleeder screw and the fender. Okay, you're gonna have to turn this 90 degrees, try again. spring. Both of these bolts are coming out nice and easy. Caliper bracket bolts are being real stubborn though. So it's probably going to need some kind of a prying device. You can use a C-clamp against the back over here and the front right here. The idea is to push the pistons back just a little bit so you can get the caliper off. In this case it's it's worn metal to metal so I don't even think I can really find a spot in here to get leverage where I can pry this. I can't I can't find anything in here. So I need my C clamp which I don't have. Okay, traveling a little too light. Everything else on her here looks good. Belts, bushings, bearings, links, struts. Struts a little damp, but not excessively. It might be starting to go. The bushings all look good. So let's get this caliper off of here. Wow, those pistons are way, 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 way out. So, this is where that double piston caliper compression tool is going to come in extremely handy. I'll have to go grab that. Uh, this upper wheel well is shredded. What's left of it. I don't know where all the fasteners are for it. 
time to the brakes. And that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look at this. We'll slide this out. And they're not locked in there. Which is really surprising. <laughs> Look at that blue. Metal to metal. But be careful because these edges here could be extremely sharp too. Especially that one with all the burrs on it. Nice blue. Metal to metal braking. Extra traction. Oh, the inside of this rotor is a mess. Okay, let's get this bracket off. So I have the impact right here, so I might as well use it. That makes things a lot faster. bracket, the hardware, let's get the hardware out of it, eh, the scaling's not too 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 bad, yeah, see the scaling in there a little bit, not all too too bad, so I'll clean this up, oh, that, little dry that was a little dry they move but they're they're dry all right two holes in the front of the rotor there's six millimeter by one and a half pitch thread thread a bolt in each side are a little damaged from the last couple of ones that I used, so I gotta get them started kind of carefully. All right, now snug them both up. out and there's our chewed up metal to metal rotor look at all those nice colors as you can see this surface here is pretty pretty rusted up so we're gonna clean this all up before we put the new rotor on Spray this with some fluid film. Put some paper towels and wipe off the access. It's moments like this that I'm not really a huge fan of. Customer picks up his own parts. I don't mind. I just mind when they don't get the right ones. And in this case, we've got the brake pads. Ceramic brake pads. And that's all that's in this package is brake pads. So we don't have any new hardware. Uh, he ordered new calipers. Uh, I didn't tell him we needed calipers, but he ordered calipers. Calipers come with the hardware. But if these halop calipers are good, I can't go stealing the hardware from that caliper package. And I'm not going to hope the calipers are bad. But we'll be back in a few minutes. i got to go get the means to depress the caliper, make sure the caliper is in fact good. 
and then figure out what to do about the hardware. I didn't mangle it pulling it out so we can clean it up and recondition it if need be necessary. It's not dented, dinged, gouged, damaged in any way, shape, or form. So we can just clean these up and reuse them if we have to. I prefer not to. Uh, sound deadening backing plates for the brake pads probably come on the brake pads. Yeah, I can feel them. So yeah, let's get the new rotor on here. Yeah, these at least look like the right rotors. Oh. Yes, they do. Let's make sure they're exactly the same diameter. There they are. They're five lug. Got the removal holes. The steps on them are the same. Make sure the height on them is exactly the same. The way to do that is to hold them staggered like this against each other. And we're good. So we need to get all of the oil off of this one that protects it so it doesn't rust when it's sitting on the shelf storeroom. Again, trying to not be too wasteful. I'm going to need another can. Go ahead and give this a little rinse down. A little pre soak. That can's empty already. That's fluid filling. We don't want to use that up on it. If that would be bad. All right, now let's spray down. Like so. Get it good and wet. Now we can come through here and finish mopping up the oil on here. What we need to worry about the most at the moment is the back side of it. We can't get to once it's put on the vehicle. Now, see if we can find the witness marks. No, nope, no witness marks. We have no holes for getting to the bearing or anything, so we don't really need to worry about what direction this rotor goes on. Once the rotor's in place, get a lug nut or two if you choose. just because I think it'll hold it better. There we go. Nice and tight. Now let's finish cleaning off the outside of this rotor. Probably should do a training pad underneath here instead of trying to catch it with a cloth. But no training pad unless the blow away and all this crazy wind. Nothing left on this now but fuzz. Okay, that was completely empty. This should get tossed. Right, shame on me for not having the appropriate tools with me. We're going backwards in technology using channel locks. Hopefully, this works. Take this and move this so where we can get at the pistons. And you guys can see what we're doing here. If both of these are all the way out, make sure they're clean. There's no tears in the boot. Make sure the pistons aren't crooked from being all the way out. They're not good. Everything looks clean. I'm impressed. Very impressed. Okay, let's try gently pushing these back, if possible, with these. 
catch the edge of the piston, but do it carefully. That doesn't want to move. Doesn't want to move. All right. Next step. I'm not going to be able to push them in without damaging them, so I'm going to have to go get at least the C clamp or the appropriate tool. Right, 15 minutes later, and the magic of editing, we're back with a C clamp. I brought the appropriate tool along two piston, double piston caliper retraction tool. I was giving one of these away, was, am, still, I don't know, J-Dub, J-Dub, you commented on the video to win one of these tools, but due to problems with my computer, the hard drive and everything else, uh, I haven't been able to follow through with that, so if you could, J-Dub, reach out to me, I will do what I can to get you one of these tools, so you've seen as you rightfully won this. If I am not able to get a hold of you within a reasonable amount of time, I'm going to be awarding this to the next one in succession. Again, going back to the tool, or back to the video where I introduced this tool. But I'm just going to use the C-clamp for the moment, being that most people have one of these laying around. Or at least some people do, they're relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, you can put this right inside the piston if you want to, but what I'm going to do is, because this is double piston, I'm going to show you that by using your old brake pad, you set the old brake pad in front like this, and then clamp it by whatever means you can. This awkward position is kind of hard to do, but, and then start pushing them back. If they don't go back, you got a problem. Well, they're not going back evenly, so I can move the clamp down to the other spot. Tighten it down here as well. But that's how you push them back in with the C-clamp, or you can just use this tool, and it slides right in there like so, whoops, I over, overdid it, this slides in like so, this part right here, hooks right here, and then you can push both of your pistons in equally at the same time. These are going back rather difficult, so I'm going to crack the bleed screw open and see if that helps. And this bleed screw is an 8 millimeter. And what I like to do, rather than trying to brute them out and break them, get a heavier ratchet and just hit the handle until I can knock it loose. Back up, tighten it back up. This helps to loosen up the threads. And let's see, did we get anything coming out? We've got nothing coming out of there yet. Not loosened up enough yet. We may end up having to use those new calipers after all. Because I can't get this these pistons to move back in willingly. Yeah, I don't think we're uh, succeeding on this bleed screw. Does not look like we are succeeding on the bleach grill. That bleach screw just broke off.
and I can't get the pistons to move back anyways. Let's get those caliper. Let's get this caliper back up and out of the way for now. That ain't going anywhere. So we're going to replace both of the calipers. There's the new, new caliper. This is a semi-loaded caliper. Semi-loaded means that the caliper comes with the bracket and the hardware to install it. Does not come with brake pads. That's a fully loaded caliper. And in this case, we're just gonna be switching out the calipers because, well, he's got them and it's not worth the effort to fight with the rusty ones. They don't go back in with moderate pressure. They're not gonna go in and out properly during normal braking. So don't question it, just replace them. And I realize not everybody has money, but not everybody has an extra life to spare either. Do it, do it right, or don't do it at all. People's lives are riding on this. So now, we've got the new bracket, the new caliper. Let's break this down because we're going to put the caliper on here. I'm going to grab some anti-seize to anti-seize these uh, grooves down here that the brake pads and the hardware sit in. I will not be reconditioning the old bracket as we normally would be doing because we don't need to. So this sloppy sloppy is all going garbage. So let's get the uh, new caliper broke down. It's also 14 millimeter. Yep. Uh, the new bolts over here. The old bolts can be added to my collection in the toolbox. I'm going to grab any C's and some thread locker uh, and silicone grease. There, got our any C's, got our silicone brake lubricant and we've got our thread locker the caliper out of the way now when these are brand new these usually have grease in them but there's usually not much in them so I advise popping them open and inspecting them always 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 make sure you've got a good seal you get that wrinkle 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 that means they got a good seal but we're going to pop these open, pull out, slide the boot down off the pin, rather than pulling it out of the bracket. And then slide your pin out. See how little grease there is? We're going to add a little bit to it. Not a lot, but a little. I don't know why there's two different colors of grease in here. But we're going to add just a little bit of grease. And then we're going to bolt these on after treating them and putting the hardware on. This one's got the little rubber piece on the bottom. Again, if they're swollen or damaged, cracked, anything, replace them. Grease around the inside of the boot helps the inside of the boot getting all dried out and yucky. All right, a little extra grease. All the way down in, back up. All the way down in, 
comes back up so we're not, hy not hydraulic locked in there. Now let's get the anti seize. Apply this very liberally. Stuff gets everywhere if you're not careful. coating in the grooves. The whole purpose for this and the only purpose for this is just to help prevent rust from building up underneath the hardware and causing the, the rust jacking to lock the brake pads in place. In the salt belt that will happen. So we have to take precautions proactively to prevent this from happening. Just enough to coat the metal. Don't want any in the middle of the bracket where it's going to rub against the rotor. It's just a light coating. Doesn't have to be anything all too fancy. Coat this little landing up here in the top just a little bit too. Okay, now we can go ahead and put the hardware into it. Got to admit, it's a lot easier to just replace these things than it is to spend all this time reconditioning the bracket. This little ear faces outward, locks down in the space where the groove goes. Top one on. Way. Put your clips go in, sit just like that. The little tabs on the inside edge to keep it located. Now we can go ahead and take this bracket and bolt that back in place. And we'll put uh, just a little bit of blue thread locker on the rusty part of the threads. Once again, enough for both of them on here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the bracket in place. Right, the bolt started. The other bracket in place. Bolt started. They must have painted inside these grooves because those bolts are stiff in there. Spin those in. I'm going to put the cap back on my thread locker. Now, I like to leave a little bit of a wiggle in there. Snug them both up gently. This way, here there's no chance of warping the bracket. And then go ahead and torque these down. Uh, the torque on these is probably about 70 foot pounds. Very, very heavy duty bolts going into cast iron. Clearance issues with the rotor and the bracket. 
plenty of space on both sides. Equal space on both sides is important. So we're all set with this now. Let's grab the brake pads. Now we have four brake pads. Let's make sure that all four are exactly the same. There's no difference between the inboard and the outboard or any of that silliness. They look like equal pairs, equal thickness. Some cases you may end up with a set of brake pads where one's thicker than the other. Uh, refer to your manufacturer's uh, handbook, shop manual to determine which one goes where. And these are both exactly the same. Neither one of them has a different curve. These are ident absolutely identical. All four. Super, super dusty. Wow. These things must have come from China. So two over here, two for the other side. And we'll take these with no lubricant and just put them in. Again, no lubricant, just put them in. These should have squeal clips on them. But, oh, speaking of which, we have squeal clips. We do not, however, have a new banjo bolt. We've got the washers, but no banjo bolt. There's a hole in the bag. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. I didn't see the banjo bolt in the box. No banjo bolt in the box. Well, inspected the other one real quick. The other one doesn't come with a banjo bolt either. But so we're going to need to use both of these with the old banjo bolt. And here's our little squealer clips. Squealer clips always go on the leading edge. We're going forward this way, so the top is the leading edge. We've got two of them, so we're going to put one on each. And this little metal clip right here snaps on the end of the ear. So that this tiny little itty bitty tab, see that little curved tab right there? That little curved tab is going to be rubbing on the rotor when it gets too low. There's a little hook right here and a little indent right there. Slide that right in. There, just like that. How pain that little stinker was. edge of it, and back edge of it, front edge of it, back edge of it, just a little bit. Same thing with the back one. And go ahead, this one in. Okay. 
contacting the rotor. Just put grease on the rotor. Now I put the new caliper over all of this assembly. Make sure your bleed screw is up at the top, otherwise you get the wrong side. Go ahead and just put that in place. A little bit of blue thread locker again. Wow! Got it on my finger instead of the bolt. That one's coated. Bring them all the way in. And these are probably down around 30 to 40 pounds. Too tight, you'll break them. All right, now we got to bring that mess down. Let's get this bleeder screw cracked loose. Get the little boot off of it. Okay. The old bleeder screw out of the socket. Here comes more of that wind. Get all the yuck out of the inside of the socket. plug out. I like to save these, never know when they might come in handy. Now let's get back to this mess. So I'll put this so you can see what we're doing here. It's 14 millimeter. I'm going to grab a 14 millimeter box wrench for this. Grab a pair of needle nose pliers I've already got set up for this. A pair of needle nose pliers, a little piece of rubber hose. Take the rubber hose, slide it on the needle nose pliers so you got you can protect the hose that you're gonna be squeezing so you don't crush it or cut it. And we'll try to put this where we can get at it easily. Clamp right there. And if we did it good, it will stop dripping all over the place. And 
let's see. Let's get that bolt the rest of the way out. Now you also see a hook right down here. That hook has a corresponding hole that it's got to go into. Careful of all of the brake fluid that's still inside the caliper. There's quite a bit of it with pistons pushed all the way out. A couple of little drips on the ground here. Let's get them mopped up. All right, now let's take this banjo bolt out and clean it off. Now, if you note, know, there's a little clip right here. Those are your crush washers. This is a different design. We're going to take this out. We're going to be replacing this with both of the copper washers. Yeah, make sure everything is clean. Grab one copper washer, put it on the bolt. I like to, they get stamped in one direction. I have this weird thing where the rounded edge, I always put it facing out towards the head of the bolt. And then when I put the other one on, I put the rounded edge in towards the caliper so that these machine cut edges are always facing towards the hose. Make sure that's also clean. Put your banjo bolt through. Put your other copper washer on. Bring it down, get your copper washer started. And make sure you get that little eye into the a little hook right into the hole that it corresponds with. These are about 18 foot-pounds. They're very, very light. Just enough to crush the washer. But not break the bolt. Well, now we can go ahead and undo this clamp. I want to make sure that the master cylinder is full first. That's our master cylinder. That is really, really, really dark fluid in there. It is full. I'm not going to remove the cap yet. I will when I'm refilling it, but what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm going to bleed this way down low to get most of that crappy fluid out of there. Uh, hose. Leader screws are already loose. Hose on there. And recovery bottle ready. Dark fluid in there. It's Now I can release pressure on the vice grips and pump the brake pedal until we feel some pressure. I'm going to crack this just ever so slightly so that air can get through but the brake fluid won't. So I'll know when I'm full. The air come through, felt the brake fluid, pump that a few times. I am sure there is no air left in there now. But this is a brand spanking new caliper. There could be air bubbles in it anywhere, so I like to tap on the caliper. I like to use a smaller hammer to do it. I don't have it with me. 
but this way there, if there's any air in here with dislodging it, and it's coming up to the bleach screw. Now if we're gravity bleeding good, we'll be able to get drip as soon as I open this up. Yep. We're going to leave this open like this and just let it drain for a little while. I feel like we get it down low enough to put some new uh, brake fluid in it. Just keep an eye on that master cylinder. A long ways to go. Now once you've got everything all bled out, you know there's no air left in there, go ahead and snug this up. That's only about seven or eight foot pounds. With just a couple of fingers. Now we'll take the original the little cover that goes on and not lose it. Wow, there's some brake fluid on it, it's slippery as heck. Okay. Through on my fingers, it's so slippery. Now we're going to take a little of the silicone grease and we're going to cram some of it inside that little cap and then inside the end of the bleeder and then put that cover on. That'll keep your bleeder from getting all rusted up on the inside and it'll help keep it from locking in there in the future. And that's how you replace the brakes on this side of the car. That's all it. I'll put the wheel back on, get over and do the other side. Jack stands sunk. Tightening those down. On the other side. Yeah, if you guys like that one, 2005 Lexus ES330 front brakes, rotors, and calipers, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, you got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches.
Looks like it's going to rain any minute now. Never, ever, ever trust a part that's brand new. Never.